Hey guys and welcome back to Blackthorn Prod. I'm Liam. In this video, I will show you how to transform this small single player game into an online multiplayer game in just nine simple steps. When I first started out, developing a multiplayer game seemed like a very complicated and daunting task. This video will hopefully show you the contrary and give you the knowledge so that you can develop your very first multiplayer game without too much hassle. Before we begin, thank you to Milanote for sponsoring this video and supporting this game creation community. They've created one of the most impressive project management tools out there. What we love is its incredible simplicity and elegant design, while still being filled with depth. You drag and drop to do checklists, images, notes and arrows, to organize your thoughts, plan ahead and share your vision with the rest of your team. There's even dozens and dozens of pre-made templates you can use to get started, such as the level design layout, RPG dungeon map, or even character profile. Simply use the link in the description to get access to Milanote for free. Alright, so in my project, I've got possibly one of the simplest games that you can make. It's just a player character that can run around the scene and pick up some coins. The character also switches from a idle animation to a run animation, and we have a little UI text to keep track of the number of coins that we have collected so far. Now let's turn this little single player project into an online multiplayer experience. So step one is to create a server to host our game. Any multiplayer game needs to have a server. You could think of a server as a messenger. One player will do something in a game and then the messenger, which is the server, will in turn let all the other players know about what that player did. We'll be using the very popular multiplayer solution called Photon to develop this game. And thankfully, Photon lets us create free servers. So head over to photonengine.com and start off by creating yourself an account if you don't already have one. Once you're signed in, head over to your dashboard. This is the place where you will see all your multiplayer servers, or apps as they call them. So let's create a new one. We'll go ahead and choose Photon Pan for the Photon type. And then you can name your application as you wish. Once you're done, just go ahead and click create. And that's it, your Photon server has now been created. Step two is to import Photon into our Unity project and link it up to our Photon app. So I'll head over to the Unity asset store. That's assetstore.unity.com. Once you're on the website, just search for Photon 2, then click on the free version of Photon. So go ahead and add it to your assets and then open it up inside of Unity. Here, you will just need to press this import button. Once it has finished loading up, you'll get prompted to provide an app ID or email. So quickly go back to your dashboard and then copy the app ID from the app that you just created. You then just need to paste it in here and click on the setup project button. Perfect, our project and our Photon app are now linked together. Step three is to create a loading scene that connects us to the Photon server. Basically, before you can play any multiplayer game, each player needs to successfully connect to the server. So we went ahead and made this simple loading scene that just has a little background image and a text object that says loading. Now I'll create a new empty game object called connect to server. I'll then create and add to this object a new C Sharp script also called connect to server. In here, we will need to import the photon.pan namespace. This will give us access to all the multiplayer tools that Photon provides. And then simply inside of the start function, we will call the photonnetwork.connect using settings function. It's as simple as that. Okay, so step four is once the player has connected to the server, we want to transition him from the loading scene to the lobby. Alright, so for those who don't know, a lobby is the place where players can create and join rooms. And a room is basically a private instance of the game. So if I wanted to play a game with my brother Noah, I'll create a room with a secret name. And then I'll share that name with my brother so that he can join in and we can play together. So we also went ahead and created this simple lobby scene. That just has a input field and a button for creating rooms and also an input field and a button for joining rooms. Okay, so inside of our connect to server scripts, we want to check when we have successfully connected to our server. 
To do so, we'll first need to derive our script from mono behavior pun callbacks. This will give us access to the public override void on connected to master callback function. If you don't already know, a callback function is a function that gets called automatically by Photon when a certain event happens. In this case, any code that we put inside of this function will get called when we have successfully connected to our server. In here, we will write photonnetwork.joinLobby. This line will now give us the power to create and join rooms later on. Let's now create another callback function. This time, it will be the public override void on joined lobby. So once we have successfully joined the lobby, we will of course want to go to our lobby scene. To do that, we will first need to import the Unity Engine Management namespace, and then say scene manager load scene lobby. Okay, so to recap this script, we are first connecting to the Photon server inside of the start function. Then, once we have connected to it, we are joining the lobby, and once we have joined the lobby, we are loading up our lobby scene. Okay, so in Unity, I'll go to File, Build Settings, and then I'll drag and drop my new scenes into the Scenes to Build section. Now we can head over to our loading scene and press play. So after a couple of moments, you'll see that we are getting moved to the lobby scene. This means everything is working great. Step five is to now actually create and join rooms. So inside of my lobby scene, I'll create an empty game object called create and join rooms. Once it has been created, I'll add to it a new c -sharp script also called create and join rooms. First of all, I'll import the Unity Engine.UI namespace. This will now let me create two public input field variables, one for my create inputs and the other for my join inputs. Let's now import the photon.pun namespace like usual, and we will also derive from mono behavior pun callbacks since we will be using a callback in the script. So let's start off by creating a public void function called create room. This function needs to be public since we will be calling it from our create button. In here, we simply need to use the photonnetwork.createRoom function. This function needs a string parameter for the name of the room, so I will say createInput.Text. This way, the name of the room we create will be whatever we wrote inside of the createInput fields. Likewise, we will want to make the public void joinRoom function. This time, we will use photonnetwork.joinRoom and we will pass in joinInput.Text. So here we'll be joining a room with the name being whatever we wrote inside of the joined room input fields. It's important to note that when you create a room, you also automatically join that room. With that being said, so we'll use the public override void on joined room callback function, which you guessed will get automatically called once we join a room. In here, we'll want to transition to our actual game scene. But instead of using the basic scene manager .load scene function like we normally use, we'll need to use the photon network .load level and pass in whatever the name of your game scene is. In my case, it's game. So simply put, whenever you're going to want to load a multiplayer scene, you'll need to use this special photon network .load level function. Okay, so back in Unity, I'll select my create and join rooms game objects. Now I'll drag and drop the create input field and the join input field into the respective slots. I'll then select my create room button and add a on click event. Then just drag and drop the create or join room game object and look for the create room function that we made. Then just do the same process for the join room button, but this time of course use the join room function. Now go ahead and build your game by pressing Ctrl D so that you can have two instances of our game running. So once we connect to our server, I'll create a room called A on this version of the game. And indeed, the game scene is getting loaded up. And then we can join the room called A on this instance of the game, and we're also loading up the game scene. Perfect. However, there is still only one player in the game. Let's fix that now with step six, which is to spawn in our player character when we join the game. So at the moment in our game scene, we have got this player character. I'm going to add to him the photon view component. This component is required on any game object that we want to spawn on the network. Then we're also going to create a folder called resources. 
and we will then turn our player character into a prefab inside of that folder. I can now safely delete him from the scene. I would usually put all my prefabs inside of a folder called prefabs, but it is required by Photon that all game objects that get spawned on the network must come from a folder called exactly resources. That's with a capital R. So to recap, we need a Photon view component on the object, as well as turn them into a prefab inside of the resources folder. With that done, I'll create an empty game object called spawn players. Once it's been created, I'll add to it a new c -sharp script with the same name. First things first, I'll import, like usual, the photon.pun namespace. Now, let's create a public game object variable called player prefab, which will of course store our player prefab that we just made. We're going to spawn in our player at a random position on the map. So I'll make four public float variables to set the boundaries in which we can spawn him. So min x, max x, min y, and max y. Then inside of the start function, I'll calculate a random vector to position called spawn pose, with the x coordinates being a random number between min x and max x, and the y coordinates being a random number between min y and max y. Then we simply need to call the photon network .instantiate function. The first parameter is the name of the object that we want to spawn. So I'll type player prefab dot name. Then we need to specify the spawn position. So I'll use my spawn pose variable that we just calculated. And for the rotation, I'll put quaternion dot identity, which just means no rotation. If we just used the classic instantiate function, each version of the game would only see their player and not the other ones. That's why we need to use the special photon network .instantiate function to spawn the player on the server so that all the players are visible to each version of the game. Okay, so back inside of Unity, you'll need to drag and drop the player prefab into the slots and then assign the correct values into these four variables. You can quickly place a player character on the boundaries of the map to find the right numbers. If you now build the game and test it out, you should see that we now have two players in each version of the game. Now of course, there is a new problem that has arrived, and that is that each player is now controlling both player characters, and that's not something we want. So step 7 is to make sure that each player can only control the player character that they spawned in. So let me open up my player scripts. Like in almost every script when developing a multiplayer game with Photon, I'll import the photon.pun namespace. Let's then make a photon view variable called view. Remember that we added a photon view component on our player character. So instead of the start function, I'll set view to be equal to the photon view component that is attached to our player. Okay, so this is the code for the player movement. We'll just wrap all this code inside of an if statement that checks if view dot is mine. In other words, this code will only run if this is my player character, the one that I spawned in when I arrived in the game. So now if you retest your game, you'll see that each player can only move their player character. Now there is another problem, and that is that the player's position is not syncing across the network. So if I move a character on one version of the game, the other version does not get updated to reflect that move. So that brings us to step 8, which is to sync the player's movements, and this is extremely simple to do. I'll just select my player prefab and add to him the Photon Transform View Classic component. I'll just tick the position. If you now play your game again, you'll see that our players are now beautifully syncing the positions across the network. I remember feeling really happy and satisfied when I first got this to work. Step 9 is to sync our animations. Because at the moment, the other player's player character is moving, but he is still playing his idle animation. Again, syncing animations with Photon is a piece of cake. All we need to do is add the Photon Animator View components. And then inside of the Synchronize Parameter section, you should find your parameter that lets you go from your idle to your run animation. In my case, I called it is running. You now just need to set this from disabled to discrete. 
And there we have it. Player movements and animations are now perfectly syncing over the network. You'll see that our solo game has now been completely transformed into a multiplayer experience. We went from this very boring game to still a very boring game, but at least it is multiplayer now. I hope you got a good deep dive into multiplayer game development with this video. If you want to take your multiplayer skills to the next level, we've got a great Udemy course that teaches you much more in depth about Photon multiplayer developments. By the end of the course, you will have created this entire multiplayer game, which this time is pretty fun to play. Drop a like if you learned something cool in this video, and it helps us know what kind of content you guys enjoy the most. Also, comment some tutorials or video ideas that you would like us to create in the future. Thanks for watching. Cheers.